my name is Zekona Senem Kwekwa. Born and raised in Umtata, went to high school in Yugi, which is just north of um, Eastern Cape, the farms there. And currently I'm serving as a second navigating officer on the SA Galas. And I'm 26 years of age. How do you find being a seafarer like, especially as a woman? Oh, <laughs> it's actually very interesting, challenging, but also empowering too. By that I mean being challenging, having to be in a male-dominated industry, and then you just have to work um, extra hard to prove yourself that you can actually do the job that a male um, is doing and then empowering the fact that you know whatever challenge is being put in front of you you are able to do it and then at the end of the day you actually get recognized that um, yes females they can work um, they exactly the same way that a male can work in a male-dominated industry. And having been a seafarer for the few years that you have, what kind of challenges have you come across in terms of your general welfare? Are you paid well? Oh, that one, I guess we we'll, we all want to be paid a bit extra but it doesn't happen like that i mean you are paid according to 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 the salary scale that the company um calculates and feels like okay for a certain rank this is how much is going to be paid and at the end of the day it's up to you whether you accept or not because yes different companies they pay um different salary scales and also in terms of um the currency because in south africa if, as us we're working for a south african company we're getting paid in rents and before i have worked for an international company where i was getting paid in dollars but sometimes when you compare the money and then you do an exchange of it most of the time you find that you are not far off it's actually um you actually on the correct uh, salary scale so Yes, in terms of that, okay, I guess in the past what we used to struggle with when it comes to welfare on board the vessels, it was communications. But now um, that has improved so much because when you are in the ship here, you are able to use WhatsApp where you can communicate with your family all the time, which is in the past this vessel, it used not to have it. But now since it's been with SAMHSA, um, we are able to communicate with your family even when we're down in the Antarctic. And also there's a satellite phone. If there's an emergency you need to call home, um, you can you can ask your request from the captain to use the satellite phone. So yes, we do get support from the, from the company when it comes to in terms of welfare. And do you ever take leave? Ah, uh, yes. Actually, I just came back from home on the 11th of May. Um, my contract, it says that I must work two months on and I have one month off of leave. And whenever, if there's an emergency and I do need to go home or there's something like last month, I had to go to a graduation, the company, they supported me with that. And then they let me, I went off for the graduation and then I came back again, even though my leave was not yet due. Wow. It's nice to be a sailor, huh? <laughs> it's not that I mean like if you've got a valid reason why you have to sign off before your your leave time um, the company does listen to you and they do support you because at the end of the day they understand that we are all humans and we've got um, we've got families and we've got things that happen which require us so yeah and being a young female sailor I think you people are called seafarers these days, which is very, very nice. Um, in 10 years from now, where will you be? Will you still be sailing? If so, why? I, I think so. Hopefully in 10 years, I will be a master of any vessel because, you know, each and every day, 
I wake up and I actually do smile and I go like I love my job even though it's got too many challenges. It's not something that I think of um, is stress. Yes, it can be stressful, but I think I chose what I wanted to do and that does make me say that in 10 years to come, I will still be working at sea. In your view, I had a chat with uh, your fellow seafarer and I mentioned the issue of mental health. You did say that there were issues particularly about communication, but sometimes it could be just health. Sometimes it could be a bad supervisor or a bad colleague that affects you, causes anxiety, causes tension. Um, do you ever, ever, you know, encounter those kind of situations? Okay, when it comes to me, I guess it's because of my personality that whenever something is bothering me, I always find a person on board a vessel that I can talk to and then I talk that out and then I actually I always feel much better after doing that and also here on board the vessel since I'm also a medical officer so what I do is that when we've got trainees coming on the vessel I always talk to them and I always find out if they are okay and I always tell them that you know my door is open since they are trainees you'll find that maybe they are scared to go speak um, to, to a supervisor about what's bothering them so if they can talk to me and because also I'm also a woman I can just take that up to speak to a chief mate and obviously if we can't resolve and then the chief mate is going to speak to the master about that so it's it's always about creating that um family environment on board the vessel which is even if you do have a supervisor that's um that's not supporting so that's not supportive so much there will always be a person on board the vessel that you can talk to and that i think it does uh, prevent um things like um, anxiety and also being too stressed that can make you think of, of 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 taking off your life and things like that so I guess it's all it's always about to know that in life you can you you're not always alone there's always people to talk to the final question I love this question you are the master of this vessel and you've got a crew of how many people uh, currently we are 33 and then we're going to have 21 trainees on board and also 14 scientists that are going to be joining today. So the crew of Akalas, we're actually 33 currently. And you want to improve things for the 33 crew members. What would you go for first? Okay, first, I think I'll, I will go for the welfare. Because I guess if you can improve more into that, you know, when you make people feel comfortable, uh, it improves their way of working, you know, because they know at the end of the day, they are being um, recognized for their work and then they are also being compensated for that. So I think with me, it will be like the welfare of them on board the vessel. So that will mean... Um, um, the company giving more funds when it comes to entertainment because yes at the end of the day after working very hard you want to relax and feel like okay if I was at home I would be doing this and you don't want to think of the fact that you're in a confined space and things like that so I think it will be with the welfare of the of the vessel. Susie thank you very much I really appreciate it I've taken more of your time than I thought I would <laughs> oh, but it's fun. <laughs>